Hey folks, it's Meg from Grace Leather Craft. So leather trays have been in style for a while now and I'm just now getting around to making a few. Um, I wanted to design one that wasn't just a single layer of leather. I think it looks ugly when it's just like a square of leather riveted together. So um, this one, and I have a, a few different colors, is, you can see it's stitched together. Um, you can really use any leather for this. This is three to four ounce veg tan uh, for the middle. And then, I wanna say this is calf, um, and but you can use any thin, lining leather. Kid skin would be a good one. Uh, the leather I'm going to be using today is actually kid skin. It's a lavender color. Uh, I get this locally, but uh, Springfield Leather Company has reasonably priced, good quality kid skin if you want to go that route. But you can use any um, thin, tough leather for the bottom or the middle. Um, I made a few with all, not all, just veg tan in the middle. Uh, if you do it that way, you can stamp stuff on the inside and decorate that however you want to do it. Uh, this one is like the one that we're going to be doing today. Uh, I actually left the suede side of the yellow kid skin on the outside, so it's like a soft jewelry tray. Um, so that's that. Let's get started. For this tray, the outside is going to be 3 to 4 ounce veg tan, and the inside is going to be soft uh, kid skin. So I started by cutting out two pieces, one of each type of leather, and uh, they're 6 inches by 6 inches, and I used my corner punch on the piece of veg tan before I glued them together. Um, I didn't do it on both pieces because they might not line up after they're glued. My favorite glue and the one I use all the time is Master Brand Leather Cement. So I just put a thin, even layer on the smooth side of the kid skin and the rough side of the veg tan. I waited about two minutes uh, and then I attempted to sandwich them together but I accidentally dropped it and it wasn't lined up so I had to try and rip it off <laughs> so let's try that again uh, I had to reapply the glue on the spots uh, because you can see it was all jacked up uh, but when I tried the second time um, I nailed it and it looked lined up enough once I had it smoothed down, I just used my poly mallet and hammered it to uh, secure the glue, make sure it adhered really well. And then I used my head knife. Since there was a little bit of an overhang, uh, I very professionally used my head knife. Um, a rotary blade probably would have worked better for this, but I can't find my rotary cutter, so the head knife worked out well. And then once I had all the edges looking nice, I used my corner punch and finished punching the corners of the purple leather to line up. Then it was time for some open offs, heavy duty LP, really good stuff. I apply it with an old cut up Hanes white t-shirt and if you've never worked with it before, it's really good stuff. You just rub it in. It works best as a finish when you use heat. So you could use a hair dryer, but um, I just used my space heater and held it there for a little while and then after I did that it started to turn a little bit lighter in color so I just uh, put it on the bench and I actually let it sit for about an hour 
I went and did something else. And then once it was done, I used a soft cloth and buffed it. To prep it for stitching, I just used a stitching groover and cut a groove um, probably a little over an eighth of an inch in from the edge on the vegetable tan side. I didn't do the corners because I was lazy and I don't really like the way they look anyway. So, For the holes, I'm... It's not technically a saddle stitch, I guess, but it is the way that I'm going to be stitching it. I used one eighth of an inch uh, holes. And then for the corners, um, I used a single punch in the same eighth of an inch size. For this project, I used the ultra lightweight, which I believe is 0.3 of an inch uh, size waxed main thread in the lavender color and then I used my Osborne medium size harness needles. Once I had it all stitched up, I used that poly mallet again and just hammered the stitches down. Uh, I like the way it looks and it also uh, protects the stitches some. Now to mark where I'm going to make my holes for the rivets, I just lined my Omni grid up a half of an inch away from each edge and marked holes one inch inwards from each edge. So I just did this all the way around. 
And then I use my rotary punch to punch over where I marked with my scratch all for the holes. Before I riveted it, I just kind of pinched it with my fingers to make sure, just to kind of clear the way. Um, I'm using small 1 4 inch rivets from Weaver Leather Supply, but small nickel plated rivets are probably one of the most common things ever. Um, you can get them from Springfield anywhere really that sells leather hardware. And there you have it. Overall, I was pretty pleased with how it turned out. Um, I did get some open-offs on the inside. You can see the spot on the purple area, which is going to bug the crap out of me. But um, other than that, it turned out really well.